So between the last movie and this one, I've gone ahead and created styles and filled in our basic shapes with color that don't necessarily reflect everything that's going on in the styles themselves. I have enabled our display quality to show brushes, which is one of the options we haven't really played with down here, but it allows us the ability to kind of see an approximation of how the brushes will represent themselves when they get rendered. I created the styles in the usual way that we covered in movies earlier in this series. There's a couple ways to do it. One like we did at the outset where I just start from scratch right over here in the styles palette. Another way like with the windows is actually colored one yellow. Then I use the copy feature, created a new style and pasted all that information into that new style so I could apply it to some of the other windows. I've saved one of the most interesting ones to the last and it's going to be our star. Now the star is in a particle generator layer, which means really there's only one and the particle generator has made up the rest. So if we were dealing with a bunch of stars that weren't in a particle generator, a style would make perfect sense. I may create one here. I may not. It doesn't make as much sense to do it. The reason I've got them in a particle generator is in case the client wants to add a bunch, move them around, have them moving. I really don't know yet. So we'll go ahead and apply the style to this. With keyboard shortcut Q selected, go ahead and highlight that. And for our fill, I'm actually going to change the fill to black and choose OK. Then for the color for the outline, I'm going to change this to a soft yellow. Let me get that over here. That was getting a little too dirty looking. And we'll leave this right now. I'll go ahead and do a line width of two, three, maybe. When we take a look at that now, it doesn't look a whole lot like a star. That line width actually is a little too thick. So let me go ahead and select that. I'll go back to one, I think. I've got three there. Let me do, well, let's try two and see how that looks. We're at the point right now where we can add some of that frenetic activity that we wanted. But before we start doing that, let me make sure everything else is fine with our file. Always wise before you get into some of the more complex features to take a look at the file and render out a version. So we've got our stars. They look black with the yellow outlines. Well, what is up with that? This is where we're going to go ahead and invoke or employ one of the layer tricks that we haven't taken a look at. So I'll go ahead and take a look at our layer, our particle layer, open the options for that and check out some of the things that we can work with here. One is the layer blending mode. We haven't examined that and we get a host of options that if you're familiar with Photoshop, you're very familiar with these. Multiply, which takes the dark colors and multiplies them mathematically into the darker colors behind them. Screen, which does the reverse of that. And then we've got overlay, which is like laying a piece of plastic over add difference hue, saturation, all of these great, give you some great effects. But the one I'm interested in right now is screen. The reason I'm choosing screen is because all the stars have black centers and light outsides. If we go ahead and render it now, we'll see that because the center was black, the only thing that is really showing up is the outline for the star. and It gives it a much lighter, friendlier feel. With that said, let's pop back down into the star layer. I'll double click, open that up, and we'll come over to vector layer option. We'll have the chance here now to add some of that activity to this. We'll choose noisy outlines. I don't care about the fills on the stars because they don't show up, and I want the noise animated. This is going to give us a little activity that brings that naivete of the drawing look into full energy and makes it look more like a hand-drawn type of solution. For the scale, I'm going to increase the scale to 120. This gives us a little more gentle action. The smaller the scale goes, basically the, the more nodes and detail it puts in here. The other thing I'm going to want to do is to add an extra line. So we get two lines functioning right here and we get a little higher degree of vibration. I'll choose OK. When we do a render now, we can see that we've got this doubling up of imagery that goes with the stars for a very kind of cool effect. But now it's time for us to begin applying this to some of the other options that we have and that we're working with right now. Just because a 
layer has a style applied to it doesn't mean that you can't use some of these other layer functions. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and finish off creating the stylings for this, and then take a look at what the rendered solution looks like.